In this video, we're going to be talking about logs and more specifically the Shadow Priest Analyzer, which is this incredible tool built to condense all of that complex information and put it in a very easy to understand format. Now, if you haven't seen my original video talking about the whale sim, I would highly recommend checking that one out as well because this looks to try and build upon that and it's just another tool in our arsenal at improving at playing the game and making sure that our performance is as good as it can be. Likewise, if you're not already a part of the Shadow Priest class Discord, then what are you doing? Get over there, get amongst it, because it really has so much information. There are so many kind and clever souls as well that are willing to offer their assistance. So if you want to improve, get yourself over there now. To start, go to Warcraft Logs, load up your profile like I've done here, and then find the fight you want to analyze. As an example, I'll click on Patchwork, select my most recent kill, and then up the very top, copy the address bar. Paste it in here, your name's already selected, and then find Patchwork to hit Analyze. Now, I'm going to show you three distinct examples that really highlight the benefits of actually using this website. First, we'll look at a bad log, and I've picked this one because it happened when they fixed Trollflay, but in turn, broke our cast bar. This made using Mindflay an absolute nightmare. Now, as you can see, in yellow, as a warning message to us, is our average Mindflay delay. What this is, is a test of your reaction time. How long did it take for your next cast after that last tick of Mindflay completed? So for obvious reasons, you want this to be as low as possible, and some of the world's very best players have this down to double digits, 50, even 60 milliseconds. If you do go into the WoW sim and run a comparison between 50 MS versus 300, you will notice a significant difference between those damage results. Now the major red flag in this example, which is why I really wanted to uh, you know, showcase it as a great point, is uh, early Mindflay clips. 61% of those casts were clipped too early, and what is that? Well, it's when you've interrupted Mindflay for a new spell very close to that next expected tick. So you might think the cast is completed, when in fact it hasn't. What's happened? You've wasted time, you've lost out on damage, and that will add up. Close to 700 DPS being missed out on. Next, I've picked an example from this week's 25 man, which looks a whole lot better. Now, average dot down time at 0.7 seconds is how long does it really take for you to reapply one of those fallen dots? Obviously, you want that to be as low as possible. And I have this really handy week record, which you may have seen in some of my killer tips, that actually shows me when I can safely reapply Vampiric Touch without overriding it, which is exactly what Clip Dots is. Have you replaced an active dot before its final tick of damage has completed? Now, unlike retail, that damage doesn't carry across into the new dots. So a general rule of thumb is you always want them to expire before you do reapply. Now, there are certainly some exceptions to this rule, but I won't be covering that off in this video. Average off cooldown is going to look at spells that you're actively using, such as Mind Blast and Shadow Word Death, and really how long have they been off cooldown before you've decided to use those again. And then finally, GCD usage. Well, the analyzer actually determines the theoretical maximum amount of GCDs that you could have used during that fight and in the percentage they were actually used by you. You really want this to be above 90% or more, and you know reasons this may be lower can be things like unnecessary movement, perhaps you're not too familiar with a fight. Uh, you may have been targeted by a raid mechanic, such as the web wrap, which is just unavoidable. Intermissions, such as Gothic the Harvester, where you're sat around waiting for those mobs to spawn. Uh, you may not be spell queuing, or perhaps you're just confused on what to cast next. But really, on a tank and spank fight like Patchwork, you should be at least at 95%. And finally, here's a way to see every action that occurred during a fight. From here, you can track openers, target selection, buffs, pre-pots, everything. When I'm trying to improve at a fight, I'll load a top player's pass in here just to see what they're doing differently to learn something new. So as you can see from the very get-go, at the start of this fight, I've got my Potion of Wild Magic as my pre-pot, Devouring Plague, Vampiric Touch, Mind Blast, Mind Flay. We've clipped it at two, as you can see right here. In our heads, we're tracking. That's five stacks of Shadow Weaving. So up goes Shadow Word Pain. And you could follow this all the way through to see exactly what was happening at any given stage. But I'd like to go through and say, well, what stands out that may be different to what I'm personally doing at the moment. Now this is my own log and I can see here and perhaps you're looking and thinking, why has dispersion happened at 51 seconds and then suddenly there's a 15 second delay? We can actually find out why by jumping back over to Warcraft logs and clicking on the replay option. This will let you watch the entire fight as if you were there. You've got raid frames and even a damage meter. Now, if we were to skip ahead to about 48 seconds, we're gonna see really what happened at that point in time. And from here, we can see that, uh, well, both mini bosses are just about to die. It's the intermission point in the fight, and a great chance to get back some mana without losing out on any GCDs or any damage. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a like and subscribed.
Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.